Hi, today I'm going to show you how to make a virtual art gallery in Google Slides. Uh, I've I made my art gallery this the last couple of years with COVID uh, for my art show, and I've had several teachers ask me how to do it. Um, I do want to say I got this original idea from Adam Cross on YouTube, and Adam was nice enough to share this gallery with us. I'm just making this video because I did a few tweaks to make it work a little bit better for my art room. So let me get rid of these actually because I want to show you how to put these in in the video. So I will put a link to these slides that are blank in the comments because it is kind of hard to find a nice image for your background. So once you've got this blank image, um, you're going to load all of your students' art on into that gallery. So let me go ahead and insert an image. I've got mine in Drive. So I'll just pick one straight up and down here. So once you insert your image, you've got to resize it to fit the wall. And then just to make it more believable, I click on these format options and I like to add a drop shadow. And I don't really want it black, so I usually lighten it some. I make it a little further away from the art. And then I typically make sure most of them are angled a similar direction, depending on where, where it looks like the light's coming from. And I also add a reflection. Um, there are already reflections on the floor, but I think it looks more believable if I add the actual reflection of the art. And then I change the distance here to match the other art on the floor. And then I make it more transparent just so it's kind of washed out and not, not real crisp. That's just how I like it to look. So that's one. Um, something that messed with my mind that I want to tell you about, it was really hard to get art to fit on these sidewalls with correct perspective. So what I actually did I saved the images sideways before I put them in the art show. So if I need a sidewall image like this one, I have it saved sideways. So this art's not supposed to be this way. Because uh, this is the only way I could figure out how to correctly apply the perspective. So bring it in sideways. Then when the art's selected, I use this um, mask image right next to crop image, mask image, shapes, and I use this sideways trapezoid. I guess it's not a sideways trapezoid, it's sideways for me. Then I rotate to 270, or which, depending on which direction you're going, size it to fit the wall. It's still a little big. And, and it should have, you know, close to correct perspective. And then I can go ahead and, you know, mess with the drop shadow and make sure I've got a reflection. Looks like I mostly have this set up already. So the same over here, I'd have to import an image that's already sideways, apply that mask image trapezoid, and then rotate it. Um, once I have art in the gallery, now what I need to do, so let's say I've got all my galleries filled. I usually do that first. I fill every single gallery. Then you need down here after the galleries, you need a slide for every single work of art. Um, and then you can put whatever you want over here. You know, an, an art, artist statement would be really cool. Um, the student's name, whatever you want to do over there. So I made a slide for every single work of art. And now I need to start linking them because when someone enters the gallery and the art's kind of far away and they want to see it better, you want them to be able to go to the slide and see the bigger picture with the artist statement and the student's name. So if I click on the art and then up here, click on insert a link, instead of linking it to the internet, I want to link it to a slide in this presentation. So let's find out which number this art is on. 17, this art is on slide 17. So I'll link it to slide 17 and apply it. 
Then when people click this art, this thing won't pop up when other people are viewing it, but when people click the art, it'll take you to slide 17. And then I've got to link it on the way back too, right? So here I insert a text box and in the text box, I just wrote the word back. And then um, on here, I did a right, on the text for some reason, I, it works better to do a right click link. So I right clicked said link and I linked it back to slide two. So that's already on there. So when people click back, it'll take them back to slide two. So then they can, you know, click on art, check out the art, but go back to the gallery they were on. So let's do this one. Click on the art, click insert link, and I gotta see what slide is it on. Mm, 20. Sorry, I lost my click. Insert link. I want this to go to slide 20. There it is. Apply it. And then once you get to slide 20, I need it to go back to slide 2. So I right clicked. Well, first, if you don't have text on the slide, I did insert text box, typed out the word back, right click on that text box and do a link <clears throat> to slide two. So that'll take me back to slide two. Um, the other things to know, I like to have this like entrance page and it says click to enter. So this one, I just did a link. I right click added a link and linked it to slide two. So when people click enter, it'll just take them to the show. Once you're in my galleries, like in the first gallery, I did insert a text box and I just wrote out the word next gallery. And then I right clicked on it and added a link to the next slide. So when people click this, it'll take them to the next slide. Once you're in the middle galleries, you're going to want to do this for the previous gallery. So previous gallery takes you to previous slide. Next gallery takes you to the next slide. So any of these, they should work. Um, I, I've been messing with it a lot, so I don't know if I messed them up. All my links. So people can click back and forth into the gallery, out of the gallery. I think that's most of it. Uh, at the end, let's see, in the last gallery, I think I put something different. Sorry, I scrolled down too far. At the last gallery, I, I added end tour return to the beginning, <clears throat> which takes you back to the first slide. Last thing, uh, I didn't actually want people in my slides presentation. So when I went to send this out to everyone, I did file, publish it to the web. And then I published it to the web. I actually don't want to publish this one though. Let me show you um, my actual one, my, my real one. Because I was just on a little test copy. So in this real one, if I say file published to the web, sorry, it's loading, it's mad at me. Here's my, because I actually did click publish on this one. I don't want to publish the other one because it's a fake one. Um, but once you actually publish it, there's this link and I can copy this link and I've sh shared it on Facebook. I've emailed it out to staff. Um, you can share this link anywhere. And then it actually doesn't take them in your slides presentation. A lot of you probably already know this. I'm maybe over explaining. So here's the one published to the web. I added music. Uh, so they don't see your slides. This is what it looks like. Thank you.
and they hear the music throughout, and they can navigate all throughout the galleries. And then if they get to the end, they can say end tour, return to the beginning, and then back here. So if you get all your links right, it should work out. Try to make the music stop here. So I think that should be everything, inserting the images, all the links, how to publish it to the web. I will put, I think I said this, I'll put in the comments below so you can have this blank gallery to work from. And then let me know if you have any questions.